Are you dreaming of visiting Switzerland? Planning a trip to Switzerland is very exciting, but it can also be overwhelming. How do you choose which of the many scenic cities, towns and villages to visit? Which mountaintop excursions should you take? And what's the best way to get around Switzerland? And of course, how much of the country can you realistically see within your time frame? If you've asked yourself any of these questions, this is the podcast for you. This is the Holidays to Switzerland travel podcast, and in each episode, your host Carolyn Schonefinger chats with Swiss travel experts to answer your most commonly asked questions, provide practical tips, and take you on a virtual visit to the most popular destinations, and of course some hidden gems to help you plan your dream trip to Switzerland. And you'll hear plenty of conversations about Swiss cheese and chocolate too. Are you ready to plan your trip to Switzerland? Well, let's get started. Welcome to episode 54 of the podcast. Today, we'll be learning all about Geneva, the second largest city in Switzerland, and one that is truly international thanks to it being home to many international organisations such as the Red Cross and the United Nations. Geneva is situated on the southwestern end of Lake Geneva, or Lac Le Mans, as it is known in French, and it's a beautiful city with the lake at its feet and the Alps in the distance. Whilst I've visited Geneva a number of times, my stays have always only ever been for a day or two. So I've asked Geneva resident Chris Rakuti Dubin to share all her tips for visiting the city with us. Although Chris has only lived in the city for around 18 months, she must know more about Geneva than most folks who have lived there for a lifetime. Chris regularly posts ideas on things to do in Geneva on her Instagram page, Packed Suitcase. And amongst all the usual sites you'll find in any guidebook, she shares lots of hidden delights that only a local would know about. Geneva has a reputation for being expensive, but Chris's mission is to hunt down free and inexpensive things to see, do and eat in the city. And she's going to share all her discoveries with us today. Before we hear from Chris, I'd like to say thanks, as always, to the podcast sponsors, Switzerland Tourism. You'll find plenty of tips for planning your visit to Geneva and hundreds of other Swiss destinations on their website, myswitzerland.com. So go and check it out. If you need a vacation, you need Switzerland. Now, let's hear from Chris. Hi, Chris. Thank you very much for coming onto the podcast. I think you've got quite an interesting story about how an American like yourself uh, ended up in Geneva. So would you like to start by introducing yourself and telling us your story? Carolyn, thank you so much for having me on the podcast today to talk about Geneva. It's a city that I really love and I've fallen in love with in the past year and a half since I've been living here. And so it's really great to get to share everything that I've learned with your audience. So I actually had never been to Geneva before moving here. My husband had gotten the opportunity to come here on business a few years ago. I had small kids at the time and I looked online and I was really not so inspired with what I saw as like the things to do here. So I actually ended up staying home, even though I could have come here, had a free place to stay with his hotel through work and had a few days to just explore on my own. But I actually ended up staying home instead of coming, which for me as a traveler was like a really weird predicament to be in. So I, when we had the opportunity to move here, I wasn't exactly sure what to expect. Mm -hmm. I had never been to Geneva And with COVID, I hadn't been able to come and explore a little bit before we made the decision to move. So it was really an interesting situation to move to a city you had never been to before. But I came here and immediately I fell in love with Geneva. It is a beautiful city. It's a very international city. And it's a really accessible city for families and people who like maybe a little bit of a quieter city life. Okay. But it's beautiful and I really have fallen in love with it completely. Great. So what do you think it is about Geneva that has made you fall in love with it? Well, it's a very beautiful city. You know, the waterfront is just very charming and it's very well maintained. So you get into the city and it looks so clean and so pretty. You have the lake with the Jadot. It's just a very inviting city for walking around. It's a great wandering city and I love to walk. And immediately I was like walking 10,000 steps a day easily without any, with any effort. I just wanted to keep walking and explore even more. 
Um, there's a great old town and there's great food. And it's a very international city with all of the United Nations and all of the people who've moved here for work. And I love the French speaking side as well. It's a really unique aspect to Switzerland that you don't always get to experience in mm. other parts of the country. Yeah, certainly. So if someone was visiting Geneva for the first time, or, or you were welcoming some family or friends who were coming to visit you, what were the things that you would you say to them they must do and see when they come to Geneva for a few days? Well, there's definitely a few things that visitors have to do when they're here. Uh, of course, you have to go to the Jado. That's kind of like a beacon calling all visitors because it's a beautiful fountain. It's actually the, the world's tallest water jet. It's 140 meters tall. And there's actually a pedestrian bridge that goes right out to it. So you can walk on this really cool old stone bridge all the way out to the Jado. And on a day where it's not so windy or if the wind is just right, you can actually walk past it. So you're like out far into the lake and you have this great view looking up. Of course, some people like to run through it when the wind is blowing through, which is also really fun. And it's great because it's on so much during the day. It's not on all the time, but there are these volunteers. Who, and I love this. There are these volunteers that actually work for the city of Geneva. I think they do it for free because they love it so much. And they're actually responsible for turning the judo on and off and they monitor like the weather throughout the day okay and so sometimes you'll look over and it was there a second ago and then it's off because it's too windy or something like whatever their measurements that they're looking for but it, it's a really great landmark in geneva then of course if you're at the judo you should just walk along the waterfront you can walk from the judo all the way around across the Mont Blanc bridge into the Bande de Paquis, which is a, which is, I don't know what the term is, but it's a, it's a man-made, almost like a peninsula that has a man-made beach on it. So you're out in the water really far. And it's also a really cool way to see the Jado from another angle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Of course, you have to stroll through Old Town. Geneva's Old Town is not as large and elaborate as a city like Zurich, for example, but it's a really beautiful way to experience Old Geneva. There are really cute boutiques and there's watchmakers who actually have these really old workshops that you can peek in through the window, which is so fun to see. And there's so many restaurants like the Place du Bourg de Four is Geneva's oldest square. And there are so many restaurants where you can sit outside on this really mm -hmm. old, beautiful square with flowers and fountains and statues and just relax and enjoy Geneva's beauty. And of course, there's the cathedral, which I think I'll get to in a little bit about what you can do there, but it's a really beautiful from the outside. And there's one other spot that you should definitely check out if you're up in Old Town. It's the Maison Tavel. It's the oldest private house in Geneva, and it was once owned by nobility. And today it's the Museum of Urban History and Daily Life. And there's this really old relief, like a model of the city before 1850. And it shows Geneva in detail in this historic way. And it's actually the largest historical relief in Switzerland. Wow. And it's free to enter, which everyone thinks Switzerland is so expensive. But in Geneva, there's actually quite a bit you can do for free. Yeah. Uh, you just need to know where to look. <laughs> yeah, well, pretty much all those things you've just mentioned as the, as the must-dos, they're, they're all free. Yeah. How good is that? <laughs> yeah. Switzerland in general and Geneva, you know, a lot of feedback I get from people is like, oh, it's so expensive there. You have to have a lot of money to have a lot of fun. And yes, the, a lot of the restaurants are a little bit pricier, but there are plenty of options for more reasonable spending and a lot of sightseeing you can do for free. Yeah, great. And I love how you cover that on your uh, your Instagram and you show the, those different options that, the, you know, that, that there are free things that you can do so people can, can go and have a, a vacation without spending a heap of money all the time. Exactly. That's definitely one of like my guiding principles is how to share like the fun and inexpensive side of Geneva for sure. Yeah, great. You mentioned earlier that when you moved to Switzerland, your two children, two daughters, I think, um, and, and they were quite young. But do you think Geneva is a child friendly city? How have you found it? Yeah, so I have two young daughters. They're two and five. So very small. And they were even smaller when we first moved here. And, you know, honestly, I've really been blown away by all the things that there are to do here as a family and with kids. First, there are the parks. There are so many parks all throughout Geneva, and they're all really well-maintained, and they're in interesting locations. 
and they have really great play structures and they're all different. So each of the parks kind of has their own vibe. Mm -hmm. There's like an old town all the way up at the top. There's this great park that has a beautiful view up at old town and Bastion's park, which is a, a really a beautiful park below old town. They have another great playground with sandboxes and things. And there's also the Bois de la Bati, which is maybe a little bit more of a, I guess not a local hidden gem because I mean, a lot of locals go there, but I don't know if a lot of visitors would think to go there. Mm -hmm. It's a really, uh, has a cute and a free animal park. So it has a lot of local Swiss animals and they've got goats and they have peacocks and birds and, and a lot of smaller animals, but it's a really cute area to walk through. And it has, an incredible playground and it's brand new. It opened last year and it's huge and it's great. It's a great place to bring a picnic and kind of spend a nice morning with kids. Also the Natural History Museum is a great one here and there's carousels all throughout. I think there's maybe like three or four carousels all throughout kind of the main touristy area. So make okay. sure you bring some money because your yeah. kids are definitely going to want to go on that. I will say that the restaurants in Geneva may not be the most child-friendly a lot of them open like around seven o'clock. And while many of them, I would say most of them have children's menus and children's chairs, just sometimes that the vibe isn't as child-friendly as maybe what I'm used to in the States, yeah, I okay. guess. Yeah. But there's one restaurant that is great for kids. It's Luigia, and it's a kind of a local chain here. They have several locations in Geneva and, and they're known for being incredibly kid-friendly. And also like one of their locations, I believe it's in Petite Saconet, has like a little cinema where your kids can go in and into this little room and watch movies <laughs> while you eat your dinner, which is great. <laughs> the person who invented that is very smart, I'd say. <laughs> very smart. I know. But like, where should we go? Okay, that's where we should go. <laughs> Fantastic. And it's really good too. So luckily it's got a bit of everything. Yeah, great. Okay. So what are some of the um, perhaps quirkier or uh, the places that people wouldn't find in a tourist guide that they should see when they're in Geneva? Well, I will say like one place that if you're on Instagram and you look up Geneva that you may see a lot that you may not really know what it is, is like the Pont de Junction, which is basically where the two rivers merge together, the Arve and the Rhone. And there's actually, a, and it's a really cool natural wonder because like the, the Rhone is this beautiful like aqua color and the Arve has like a kind of a brownish milky, like cafe au lait color. And they merge together. And when they come together, the two distinct colors are still there wow. and they swirl together gently, like right at the meeting point. And so you can actually walk up to the bridge, the Pont de Junction, and look down and see that beautiful view. It's actually fairly accessible from downtown Geneva. You just take the seven bus and you can, you know, just take it maybe like six stops or something and do a little walk by another great park for kids. Mm -hmm. And actually you can continue when you do that, you can continue up to the Bois de la Bati and that the animal park that I said. Awesome. So that actually is a nice route. Also, I'd say biking along the lake. Um, a lot of people in Geneva like to bike and have really nice bike paths. And you can actually go to neighboring towns. You can have a nice long bike ride or a short bike ride. And visitors can rent these orange bikes that are all over the city. They're run by a company called Donkey Republic. So you can rent them by the hour or such and via an app and have a nice bike ride. Also one place that I really love is I love to go to breakfast at the Bon de Paqui. That's that peninsula, the man-made peninsula that juts out into the lake. Mm -hmm. For 10 francs, you can get this really, it's a simple and rustic breakfast, but it's so tasty. So it's 10 francs and you get like two tartines spread with either honey or butter or jam or Nutella. You get a birch or muesli, like a nice big bowl of it. You get a coffee or tea and fresh pressed juice. And you're sitting out there and you're basically on the lake. They've got these great picnic tables and it's just such a great experience. I recommend it to everybody, but I think it's something that maybe visitors might not know about. Yeah. But it's one of my mm. favorite things to do. And I have a kind of a lazy morning kid free. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds fantastic. And, and probably the best value breakfast you'll get anywhere in Switzerland, I'd say. 
it's a great value yeah. for sure. And and should people uh, reserve ahead for that, or or is it okay oh, just no, to, you, just to show up? You just show up, and they have um just just show up, and yeah, very short queues for sure. And they open really early. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> great. I'll get the name of that, and I'll put that in the show notes, so those people that are interested can definitely look that up when they're uh, in in Geneva. So what about places to go for great views? Because you have some beautiful photos on your Instagram. So obviously you've sussed out quite a few places that provide excellent views of of Geneva. Could you share those with us? Yeah, I'm a sucker for a good view. (laughs) I, I definitely search them out for sure. Like the absolute favorite one is at the top of the cathedral in Old Town. This one requires a little bit of effort because I think there's 157 steps to get to the top okay. and through this really old staircase. But for seven, you pay seven francs and you have access to both towers. So you actually get to go up two of them. And it's the highest spot in Old Town when you get up to the top. And you can just, it's almost like 360 views because when you get up there, you can kind of walk around a little bit and see behind you and see in front of you but you can see the Jadeau and the lake you can see the mountains it's pretty magical and you're also in this beautiful setting with these old Joan turrets by you and it's great it's really super I've done a lot of these like cathedral climbs in Europe and you know I will say this one really is special because you're already up so high in old town so Mm -hmm. it's just even higher yeah so that's definitely money well spent yeah and I, I will also say a tip is that you can get a combined ticket for 12 francs and also go down to the archaeological site underneath the cathedral. The site dates back to the fourth century. And basically, I mean, it was really amazing. I I walked by it a bunch of times. I didn't even know it was there, to be honest, as a Mm -hmm. resident. It's like, you're kind of, it's like really kind of hidden under there. But um, when you get your ticket, they're like, do you want to upgrade? I was like, okay, sure. I'll check it out. It's just, it is really interesting to see basically where the cathedral currently sat was like a religious site on top of religious site on top of religious site on top I mean just like the layers go back (laughs) to the fourth century and it actually really does a good job of showing you all those layers so sorry I digress but it's great that's, that's great to know yeah but also up in old town if you're up there already you can go to see the world's largest park bench and I this is a French word that I'm like I think it's the promenade de la Trelle, I believe it's called. And it has a beautiful view over Bastion's Park and the mountains. And you can kind of see where the planes take off from the airport back that direction. But that's also a really fun spot and a great view as well. And then there's one hidden spot, which mm. I will try and explain it a little bit in a easy to find way. Because, but you know, sometimes the best spots are worth a little effort, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> So if you leave downtown, like the Bel Air is the main like downtown tram line, you can walk along the the Rhone River away from the lake and you'll see like about 10 minutes, you'll see like a little elevator sign. You take the elevator up to the sixth floor at the Quai de Sujet and then you step out and you see this incredible view of the river. You can see the Jadot in the distance. You can see Old Town. And you can see, if you're lucky, the Mont Blanc mountain Mm. behind it. So it is one of these like kind of hidden gems, but it's really very accessible for tourists. I have a video about it on my Instagram that has done very well because people want to find the secret spot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there's not, I will say it's a not so secret spot because really once you find the elevator, then you're you're golden, but yeah. on, I, I forget the address, but I will, maybe I'll send it to you so that you can include that in the show notes. Yeah, absolutely. That'd like. be great. Because you just put the address on your phone and and there you go, up to sixth floor and, and it's pretty stunning, to be honest. Yeah, sounds wonderful. Yeah, now, you mentioned before that um, you're the favorite restaurant that you go when, when you're going out with your children. And I guess you've sussed out a few other restaurants in Geneva as well. But are there any local specialties that visitors to Geneva should try? I hate to say it, because I'm sure you get this a lot, but fondue and chocolate. I, there's not a ton of specifically Geneva specialties. But there are a couple. So obviously, if you're looking for fondue, which I highly recommend, the Les Amures uh, restaurant, it's a hotel restaurant, have great fondue. Mm -hmm. Cafe Soleil is kind of an old local favorite place. And the Ben de Paqui, where we were talking about for breakfast, Mm -hmm. also has really good and more affordable fondue options. 
So a lot of locals love to go there for their fondue. Also in terms of chocolate, Geneva has run through Geneva tourism. They have something called the Choco Pass. Yeah, so, I heard about this. This sounds yeah. amazing. Yeah, I've done it. It's I really would love to do it again. But what this is, it's for 30 francs. You can basically do a DIY chocolate tour and you go to seven different chocolatiers. Once you activate the pass, you have 24 hours. So you can do it over two days if you want. And you just stop by the seven different chocolatiers they give you a little rundown about what they do. And then when you're done, you leave with a little like bag or box of chocolate. And by the end, you actually have a really like big selection of chocolate. Like for our family of four, it lasted about a week and a half. And we oh, really wow. like chocolate. Yeah. So like every night we'd all have a little something, right? So it, that I definitely recommend. It's a really cool activity and you can pick up, you can get, I think you can reserve it online or you can go to the um, Geneva Tourism offices mm -hmm. and you can pick up your pass there and it's only when you activate it does it begin and it starts like yeah. yeah but there's two other chocolate things I'd like to share um because chocolate is a big part of living in Switzerland and in Geneva so mm -hmm. you know I, I want to make sure it gets its proper due one place I particularly love is La Bombonia it's a local chocolate tier here and they are part of the chocolate pass but say you didn't want to do the full chocolate pass, but you wanted something kind of special mm -hmm. and like a chocolate experience, you can go and go to, I think their location down by like the water, they have something called the instant choco, where you can go to their tea room, order the instant choco, it's like 10 francs. And you basically get four chocolates and a grand crew hot chocolate, which they have a menu of like 20 hot chocolates you can choose mm -hmm. from. And they, they're all rated and like, they're very authentic to different regions throughout the world even. So you actually can go and have like a nice little chocolate tasting. And I think technically when I went, I got five chocolates because you get the four chocolates and then you get the chocolate with the hot chocolate. Okay. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I don't know why they don't advertise it with five, but yeah, it was, and it was really good. And it was just the right amount. And like, I can imagine if you go with a friend, it would be like a really fun thing. Mm -hmm. But the one last thing that actually is a real... Geneva specialty is in, in December, there's a really special chocolate experience that's only found in Geneva during Escalade, which is like the big celebration in mid-December. It happens around December 11th. You'll see throughout Geneva, all the chocolatiers have these little cauldrons, it looks like. They're mm -hmm. handmade out of chocolate and they've got really elaborate decorations on it. What this is, is it's called the Marmite de la Escalade, and it's a chocolate cauldron that's filled with marzipan vegetables. And it's only in Geneva, and it represents a boiling pot of vegetable soup that was once poured on invading troops in 1602. <laughs> and basically, the story goes that like this lady poured out this boiling soup to help deter the invaders. And it caused such a commotion because like the troops were getting poured with scolding hot soup that it alerted the rest of the town that there was invaders. And so they were able to kind of mobilize and stop the invasion. And so now it's like this big celebration during Escola. They have these cauldrons and you can buy them even at the supermarket, but like all the chocolate artisans make them too. And the kids, like there's a, a game where they break the cauldron and the mm -hmm. marzipan vegetables come out and that's definitely a very unique situation to Geneva, but it, it's fun how so many things tie back to the history. Yeah, no, oh, that's that's definitely very unique. Yeah. Now, what tips do you have for getting around Geneva? What, what's the best way that, that people should get from place to place? As I mentioned earlier, Geneva is a very walkable city, and that's one of the things that I love the most about it. Um, you really can get around most places by foot. And I would encourage, uh, if you're able to walk around a lot, um, I would encourage you to explore by foot because there's so many little discoveries you'll find along the way. But I will also say that Geneva, if you stay in the Geneva Hotel, you'll get a transport pass when you arrive. So and that gives you access to all the trams, all the buses, and a really special attraction slash transportation option that I haven't shared yet. It's the Mouettes. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the, the Geneva waterfront, you'll see these little really happy boats crisscrossing the, the lake, the, these little yellow boats. And they're the Mouettes. And they're run by the Geneva public transportation. They're included in your transport pass. 
and there are four routes that kind of help you get across the lake. They're like little water taxis. Yeah. But I mean, I actually just like to ride on them just for fun because most of them get you really close to the Jado. So you get a great view of the Jado. It's almost like a, a little boat tour. Mm -hmm. But I mean, they range from about five minutes long to I think the longest is like 15 minutes, but there's four routes and it's definitely, I'd say that's a must do as well. Yeah. Okay. So you can just hop on and and go from one place to another and have a look and and go on on the unique transport. Yes. And I will say though, make sure you have your transport card with you because wow. And and on all public transport, like they don't check it when you get on, but if you don't have your ticket, there are very high fines. Mm -hmm. So. And I think that's the case with most places in Switzerland, yeah. but definitely make sure, you know, to keep your ticket with you. Great tip. Is there a particular area in Geneva that uh, people should look to stay when they're, when they're booking their accommodation? Yeah. So when I, when we first moved here, we were in temporary housing and we stayed right at the base of Old Town in this little hotel called Hotel Central. And they had apartment. I mean, it's more affordable, like little apartments and stuff. So it was great for a family, but it was right at the base of Old Town around the Millard area. And it was a great location for just exploring the waterfront, getting over to the other side and getting to Old Town. And it was really like the perfect place if you only had a couple days to stay. I would also stay over in the Paki area on the other side, basically anywhere around the waterfront between mm-hmm. the Jado all the way to the Banda Paki and a few blocks back. I think those are all really good areas. And also even around the train station towards the lakeside, a lot of times staying near train stations in many European cities may not be a, a desirable thing, but in Geneva, it's very safe. Mm-hmm. And I would say that would also be a great place to stay, especially if you're looking to do some day trips, which I would recommend. Okay. Now you've obviously um, seen a lot of Geneva and you've got lots of fun things that you've done, but how would you spend the perfect Sunday in Geneva? So it's funny. Uh, when I first moved to Switzerland, they were like, I, I remember reading like, oh, Sunday, there's nothing to do. And, you know, there's, you're going to be bored and everything's going to be closed and, you know, it's the day for rest. And I would say it is the day for rest. Like the grocery stores are closed and like the, like the shops are closed, but the bakeries are open. So, I mean, for the most part, the bakeries are open. And for me, that's everything, right? Mm -hmm. Like as long as I'm well fed and the restaurants, as long as I'm well fed, I'm happy. So between the views and everything and the, and the restaurants and bakeries, I'm in good shape. But for me, what, what we have kind of a family walk that we like to do where we like, I'll wake up and we'll grab a cup of coffee at a local coffee shop. And then we'll walk to the market in Plain Palais, which is kind of a big open air, like, I don't even know what to call it. It's just a giant area where they sometimes have festivals and events and like Cirque du Soleil put up a huge tent there. But along the, along the sidewalks around it, they have a big market on Sundays. So, and it's bustling. So it's always a good place to go for food or, you know, they have kind of ready to go food or they've got produce and stuff like that. It's a really nice market. And then I'll, we'll go over there. There's a great bakery I love called the, and I always pronounce it wrong. So don't come for me. <laughs> it's a Marvelou de Fred. And so it's not a Geneva bakery. It's kind of a European chain, I'd say. I think there's some in Paris and there's a couple in Geneva. Just open one in the Zon. But they have these incredible Belgian cremiques, like these giant brioches that are studded with chocolate, or I love the sugar ones. And they are, so, they're so good. And they're open on Sundays. So that's kind of a nice, like, you know, at that point, we've had a bit of a long walk. And then we'll walk through Bastion's Park and see the Reformation Wall. And they, kids will play, walk up to Old Town from there. Stroll through Old Town and it's really quiet on Sundays. It's beautiful. Mm. You really feel like you've stepped back in time. And then I go down to the water. You know, it's amazing how quiet, like the bustling business district is on Sundays. Mm. But it's really, really special to get to see it like that for sure. And the water is just as beautiful, you know. So it's just, just really nice. Yeah, to be honest. Sounds perfect. And the, yeah. that uh, that bakery sounds like a, a must visit. Absolutely. <laughs> It's so good. <laughs> so before we let you go, um, what is your best tip for a first time visitor to Geneva? You know, I think I would say just come here and be ready to just be like delighted. You know, I think 
like as I had in the very beginning, you know, I had these preconceived notions about Geneva, but I think that like, if you come and you just are prepared to kind of, if you're prepared for a little bit of a, like a simpler city where it's not like so many people and not so many like bars and, you know, it's just, it's just nice. And if you, you know, if you can just come and, and enjoy like these special places I've mentioned, I think you're going to have a really wonderful trip. Yeah, it definitely sounds like it. Now, where can our listeners find you online? So I'm on Instagram and TikTok on Pack D Suitcase. So it's Pack Suitcase without the E, so Pack D Suitcase. And there I share like kind of my favorite places in Geneva, a lot of restaurants, uh, emphasis on more inexpensive places, do some hotel tours. And also I'm about to start a YouTube channel with the same name where I'm hoping to do some walking tours of the Geneva waterfront and things like that. And just to sh- so people can kind of see Geneva through my eyes. Because I feel like I have a, a nice lens. Yeah. So. What, a, what a fantastic idea. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much, Chris, for for joining us and for sharing everything that you know about Geneva with us. It's been wonderful. Thank you for having me. After hearing from Chris, I can see that I definitely need to include a few days in Geneva on my next visit to Switzerland. I'm not sure what I'll do first, though. Will I head to the junction where the two rivers meet, enjoy a ride across the lake on a mouette, try the instant choco experience at La Bonbonniere, have breakfast at the Bain de Paquis, right on the lake, or perhaps visit one of the best viewing points in Geneva. I definitely want to do them all. If you're still eager to learn even more about Geneva and all the fantastic things to see and do in the city, you should definitely head on over to Chris's Instagram or TikTok page at Packed Suitcase without the E. I'll include links to both accounts and her new YouTube channel, as well as the names of all the places she chatted about today in the show notes for this episode. You can find the show notes at holidaystoswitzerland.com forward slash episode 54. Thanks so much for joining me today. Until next time, tschüss. If you'd like more great resources to help you plan your dream trip to Switzerland, there are lots of ways to connect with us. Visit our website holidaystoswitzerland.com Sign up for our monthly newsletter or join our friendly, helpful community of past and future travellers in our Switzerland travel planning group. You'll also find the links to connect with us in the show notes for this episode. Show notes and a list of all previous episodes are available at holidaystoswitzerland.com slash podcast. Don't miss out on your fortnightly dose of Swiss travel inspo. Hit the subscribe button on your favourite podcast app so you never miss an episode. And if you enjoyed the show, please leave a rating. That's all for this edition of the Holidays to Switzerland Travel Podcast. Thanks for joining us and happy travel planning.